So this is Fisherman's Corner. I'm yet to talk to this gentleman in person or online, but other than through my comment section. Here's a description of his channel. As a former Catholic chaplain's assistant in the U.S. Marine Corps, Pentecostal and Northern Baptist, I became a non-denominational Sabbath keeper. Almost two years later, I discovered I was naturally aligned to the Seventh-day Adventist Church from the Bible alone. I was baptized into the SDA Church in 2023. Join me as I share insights from nearly 40 years of my Catholic, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, and non-denominational Protestant experiences and how it aligned me to Seventh-day Adventism. I love, I just, I love uh, converts. I'm, I'm like a fourth generation Adventist who went astray for a long time and came back, but always, you know, grew up in the schools, etc. And I like, you know, generational Adventists just fine. That's fine. But converts, you know, are more exciting. <laughs> So I love what this guy's channel. So check it out. It's the Fisherman's Corner. Subscribe to his channel. Uh, dude's on fire in a good way. Let me play one of his videos here. Let's see. Let's see, those, let's watch this one. For anyone with dental issues, do not drink water. Did you know there's a simple way to regrow teeth and gums that only 3% of the before I became a seven day Adventist, I actually studied for two years straight. And I have to thank the people that have attacked me over and over and over again. I have never been a viciously attacked as a Christian than until I started looking into seven day Adventism. There is a very bad spirit out there coming for this church. I have never, it's been very strange, but for me, being a United States Marine, I'm okay with that. I'm okay going towards that battle. So I look deeper and deeper and deeper. And one of those things I discovered is that in Matthew chapter 11, now you notice I don't give the verse because you should read the whole chapter. The whole chapter is going to give you context. You see a lot of people, they pick a verse, they cherry pick a verse, and they make it mean whatever they creatively want it to make it mean. Do you choose creation and your meaning, or do you choose the creator? Read the whole thing. So Matthew chapter 11 at the very end, this is quite amazing to me. And it says here, I thank you, Father, heaven on earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise. I thank you, Father, from hiding that from the wise. When I had all this knowledge and I thought I knew what I was thinking, that I knew better. And prudent, but yet you have revealed them to the children. Yes, he revealed that to me as a three-year-old child. As I was looking up at that goofy, cartoony Ten Commandments, I knew something was off, and it has always stuck with me. Always. And it does not matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how wise you are. Humble yourself and ask and listen to the Lord your God. Do not harden your hearts. So I just wanted to suggest you go to his channel and... Subscribe to at least, even if you're not a Seventh-day Adventist. And, uh, oh, this looks good. I'll so let me go ahead and read Hebrews 4, since uh, this is what we're talking about. I summarized it, so feel free, while I'm reading it, feel free. I, I broke this down in three different ways, right? Three different parts in three different ways, kind of like... God, right? <laughs> so therefore, since a promise remains of entering God's rest, not the Sabbath, I want to make that clear. Since therefore a promise remains of entering God's rest, let us fear at least any of you seem right. to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, them being before Christ is come. So the gospel is consistent here. So the, the gospel was preached to them as well as to us. We all have. This goes light along with what I've been studying in First and Second Peter. When Peter talks about the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. is the same spirit that preached to the spirits that are now in prison. If you want to say, read it that way. But they were in prison 
which Jesus came to set them free, the captives, when he quotes Isaiah 61 and Luke 4, being filled with the Holy Spirit, starting his ministry, stopping short of and the day of judgment of our God, because that's to come. But now he's come to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Yes, to destroy the works of the devil, which have man in bondage unto death. But Christ comes, what did he do? He hung out with sinners. Not because sinning is good, but because he didn't come to save the righteous, but to save sinners from their sins. So that the righteousness of the law would be manifested in us. He was compassionate. These people knew they had a problem. What does modern Christianity say? But yes, the gospel was preached. What is that? Reconciliation for iniquity. That's the gospel from the foundation of the world that Christ came to make happen. At the same playing field. It did not profit them because what they heard was not being mixed with faith. It's very clear here. It's not about works. It's not about faith. We can, we can abuse either side. It's about being mixed with faith. The spirit is strong. The flesh is weak. It needs to be mixed. For, for who have believed do enter God's rest. Who have faith do enter God's rest. And rest as it says, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. What does that even mean? Well, this is Psalms 95. Remember, remember the interweaving, interconnection thing I was speaking about? That's actually Psalms 95. Yes. The gospel is reconciliation back to God, which is a faith issue at its foundation, right? Eve didn't have faith in God. She went her own way. So this is why sanctification is linked to justification. Because the foundation is faith, and it's the only way to be reconciled. But that looks like something. It, it, it leads to something real, which is being conformed to the image of the Son. It's a true faith back to God, trusting Him, which leads to repentance and a change. Where the people were trying to get to Canaan, the promised land. That's where we find rest. If you don't believe me, just hold, hold on one second on that. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, finally, now it's pointing to creation, the foundation of the world. That's where we find a rest. For he has spoken of a certain place on the seventh day in this way. Wait a minute. Let me read that again. He says, uh, for he has spoken in a, certain, in, a, in a certain place of the seventh day. A certain place. Have you ever thought of the seventh day as a place and not as just the day? Well, sounds like the Bible's trying to tell us this. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. It's not about the day, is it? It's about being in the place. What is that place? What does God's rest mean? So, it says... Where Jesus is... That's where rest is. Lord of the Sabbath. The truth is inevitable. God's people will honor God as the creator. Jesus, Lord of the Sabbath. It will happen. If you're a believer out there and you're not keeping the Sabbath, you will. You will be. Therefore, it remains that some must enter that it was first preached and others did not because of disobedience. We now know that disobedience means not having faith mixed in what you do. So he designates a certain day to David. So since the foundation of the world, when we fall in, so we talked about the foundation of the world, we've fallen. Now he brings up David. Why would he bring up David? David was the promised line of the Messiah, wasn't he? Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So wait a minute. Salvation seems to be what God is asking us to join him in. 
For if Joshua, so now he invoked David and he moved from David to Joshua. For if Joshua had given us God's rest, then he would not have spoken of another day. Another day of what? Another day to get to the promised land. Joshua was keeping the Sabbath. Moses established that. Everybody was afraid of not keeping the Sabbath, right? Because they did not want to die. But that wasn't the point. God wanted us to have rest. It doesn't say, thou shalt not, not keep the Sabbath. No, it says, remember the Sabbath. So it's a positive. Have you ever noticed that? The Sabbath is presented as a positive. Not don't do this, you get punished. So if Joshua had given him rest, so we know that the, the day referring to Joshua was the promised land. He wouldn't have spoke of another day when someone will come to lead us to the promised land. For if Joshua had given him rest, he would not have spoken of another day. So this is it. So we heard God's rest, God's rest, God's rest. We've established that God's rest is actually a place. It's a place over and over and over. And it concludes, there remains, therefore, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his God's rest would also have ceased as the Sabbath from works as God did. If we have faith in God every single day, if we trust in him and listen to him, he will guide us into his place, which he has established on the seventh day since the beginning of time. Yeah, that's so. to me it's so obvious. Like the final rest is more than the Sabbath, but it's saying, it's literally saying, if you've entered his rest, there remains a Sabbath. (laughs) Like the literal Sabbath is what's going on there. Like the word for Sabbath there is the Sabbath rest. You can look at the different translations. And it's so funny too, because it says labor to enter that rest. And uh, it's like most of the, most of the commandments are refraining from doing evil. But like one of, one of the, commandments that's actually doing something is doing rest so sabbath is a positive command of not working (laughs) now it also goes on and it talks about in hebrews 4 that christ is our high priest so let us oh just just for fun uh so Sabbath keeping is is doing a positive resting. I like to say it like this. I've never labored harder than to try to believe once saved, always saved. I try I mean I worked so hard, man. I studied. I tried to see it their way. I've never labored so hard to believe in once saved, always saved. And then I found rest in Jesus. So I just want to quit working. And actively rest in Christ on the Sabbath. So I put down my shovel. Stopped laboring so hard. Now I have assurance in Christ. Therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We can go straight to dad and say, dad, I need help. Now, you might have had time to look at the, the different words here. It turns out God's rest, the quality here is I had to e- I had to email it, so the quality is kind of bad. I'm sorry about that, so I compressed it. Um, God's rest, over and over, if you look at the actual word for God's rest in Hebrews 4, it's kata, kata, pausen. So it means the place God has established. It's actually his abode. It's his house. So over and over, when it says God's rest, it's actually establishing that it's God's abode. It's his domain. Doesn't that sound like the fourth commandment? Within your gates? Everyone within your gates keep the Sabbath? Well, aren't we all within God's gates? Did he not establish that to be on the seventh seventh day that he gave to us? And then only once at the end of Hebrews do we actually see that it finally says the Sabbath. Isn't that exactly what he did? Did he not establish creation and then hand it on to us for us to use? Yeah. 
Yep. Even, yeah, look. Even the sinner within the gate. Even the foreigner. Even the beast of burden is afforded the Sabbath. Even the stranger within your gate. Everyone gets the Sabbath. Don't refrain from giving everyone the Sabbath. You owe it to them. God made it holy. What God makes holy, let no man undo. How dare you claim there's no Sabbath? Take my Sabbath away. Make me work on the Sabbath. How dare you? Works-based salvation. Anyways, please do go to Fisherman's Corner. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. This guy's on fire. Um, so I appreciate his channel and the comments he makes on my channel. So God bless. Check out his channel, Fisherman's Corner. Give him a subscription. And uh, God bless. Hopefully we can, uh, hopefully I can uh, have him on my channel soon. We could have a conversation. I'm in uh, North Idaho. Uh, barely in the, I think, Pacific time. Uh, just on the border of the time, the hour difference, but I'm on the West Coast time.